Welcome to the MapInfo Discover webinar series. The presentation will start shortly. So what we're going to do now is we need to add a caller ID and we also need to add the caller locations because ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to save these to a file that we're going to give to a field crew so that they can go out and they can locate these holes on the ground. Now to do that, let's just open a browser window with our Copper Hill targets. And so you can see all that we have here is we have an ID field and it hasn't been populated. So let's do a couple of things. The first thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to add the coordinate locations for each of these holes. And I'm going to use Discover to do that. So I'm going to come up to Discover, and this is the data utility. And it is one of the utilities that's called Update Coordinates. So now what it needs to know is which table is it going to update. And we're going to use our Copper Hill Targets table that we've just created. And what it's done here is it's taken the projection from the underlying map window, and that's fine. And then what it wants to know is how is it going to update this. So what we're going to do is we're going to update from the objects that we've created into columns that are in our browser table. And then the next thing that we need to do is give it the name of these tables. So the first one, I'm going to create a new column. And in this case, we're going to call it AGD66 underscore East. And the next one is going to be another new column. And we're going to call this AGD66 underscore North. Let's do it all caps. And say OK and we're going to say OK again. And we get the message that says the XY update is complete. So let's go take a look at what we have both in the browser window. So you can see now we do have our coordinates have been loaded. And I'd also like to re-add that table back to our map window. So I'm coming over to the layer control and I'm just going to add Copper Hill targets back to the map window. So that's all very well and good, but what we'd also like to do is we'd like to label these points so that we're able to see which point is which. And we do have a utility for that, and that is located in the Discover Table Utilities option, and what we're going to do is come down and look for the utility that says Add Unique Identifier. So now that I've found that, what I'm going to do is fill in this Unique Identifier dialog box. So it needs to know a couple of things. It needs to know the name of the table. In this case, it's Copper Hill Targets. And I think we do want to use an alphanumeric field here. So I'm going to select the radio button that says alphanumeric. I'll start this with the number 1 and I'll increment it by 1. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to put the project abbreviation in front of this number. So I'm just going to add to it the letter CH. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new field name for this whole ID and I'm going to call it something as simple as whole ID. I can place it before the ID field and I'm going to say OK. So now you see that we do have the whole ID added to that table. We've got our coordinates, but we've got this ID field here that really doesn't mean a whole lot. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take that out of our attribute table. And I'm going to do that by using one of the map info features. So I'm coming up to table, maintenance, table structure, 
and I need to select my targets table. Now what I'm going to do is select the ID field and I'm going to remove it. So once I've done that, I'm going to check and make sure that everything looks the way that I need it to. You can see that the, the field type for the whole ID is character and the field type for our X and Y coordinates are float. So this is all making sense. So what I'm going to do now is say OK. And it tells me that one or more fields have been shortened and yes, I know that. So I'm going to say OK. To purchase these and other DVDs, go to http colon slash slash www.geographicsworld.com.